the cost of governance has again caught the attention of a lawmaker. This time, it is Bamideli Salam, Senator Represent Ed Day North, Ed Day South, and Egbedore Ejigbo Federal Constituency, and has recommended that the federal lawmakers, who are currently about 469, be reduced by two thirds. Other lawmakers, such as Rocha Sokorocha, Senator representing Imo West Senatorial District, and Dino Melaye, made similar calls in October 2019 and also in 2015, respectively. Why has nothing been done to achieve this? Joining me to discuss this still is Larry Emenike, political analyst, and Rahman Adebiji. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying still on the show this evening. Now, why is the cost of, government, of governance so high in Nigeria, and what is obtainable when it comes to international best practices in democracy, in other, in other democracy? Rahman. The first question is, to me, personally, I keep asking myself, when you have lean resource, and the resource is not enough to go around the generality of the people, 200 million Nigerians. And you have a selected few people now latching on to 25% of that resource. Then that, that means that there is, there is lack of patriotism to the nation. There's inequity. So sorry, there is inequality. Yeah. And the people who are latching onto it have not deemed it fit to say that our, our, our sole aim is to serve the people to bring the good to the generality of all. When we answer this fifth question I postulated, yes. you know, which I've put an answer to myself, then we begin to approach a system of government that is going to be slim. Because why, when people say the cost of governance is high, it's in correlation to the revenue generation of the nation and to the percentage in which that governance is costing the nation and in the face of decay infrastructure and lack of uh, com the Commonwealth of the country going round. And in the, in the face of all this, you now find that the little that is left out of the 75%, a lot of, you know, this same caliber of people now have access to it and then they loot, you know, the life out, out of it. And you begin to ask yourself the question, why? So, so if you now put a model to yourself, if these are the few set of people who are there, who are meant to represent, and their numbers are this X, and they are the same people, you know, perchance, who are perpetrating some of this looting. Do you understand? Why don't you reduce the number? Because it means that if you reduce the number, the number of loots that will go off will reduce. So you can see a correlation in that sphere. So it means that for Nigerians to survive, the, that 25% uh, uh, percentage uh, uh, postulation should go down. When it goes down, it will, it will free up resource for other activities of government like education, health, uh, transportation, and, and what have you. So for calling that, that the percentage of government should go down, I think we've, it's, it's a call we've been making at several opportunity that we've had on the media before now. Mm. And I think we should continue to make that call. And I'm happy that people in the House of Assembly, in the, uh, in, in the House of Assembly, in the ch chamber, you know, the red chamber, and you know, everybody is now calling for that. Because we need to reduce the cost of governance because it is ripping this country off and it is making this country somewhat ungovernable. Be and ungovernable in the, from the point of view of the resource is not going around. Because Nigeria should have developed way ahead of what we are finding ourselves at. Because we're still talking about good roads, we're still talking about water, we're still talking about basic power infrastructure. These are the things that should have been things of the past now. If you compare Nigeria to other West African countries, you know, who started off around the uh, same time that, that we did, Ghana, for, for instance, they've, uh, power is a thing of an history in, in their country, as, as we speak. So, you know, so those are the things that we should begin to measure ourselves about. And the cost of what we invested in power between 1999 and now, if you check, those numbers. You can see that even as, at the point in time, there was a calculation that the cost of uh, investment in power in but, Nigeria. Okay, Larry, I'm going to come to one, you. What would minute. you blame this on? What would you blame this on? Largely, a lot of people have <coughs> said the 99 constitution, Nigeria 99 constitution is to be blamed for most of our... Oh, it is yeah. two things. Yes. You can blame the constitution. You can blame the active player. Because that same constitution, if players who are sincere are applying it, you'll find a fair system. And, and what do I say? You'll find 
before now that the revenue mobilization and fiscal commission you don't think it's amendment with solve all the most of the fiscal problems? commission was yeah. meant to be the authority yes. that regulates what the uh, uh, the house of assembly members take home but suddenly in the course of their life in you know in the course of the regime we we saw that they begin to arrogate to themselves you know their enumeration they begin to arrogate to themselves the constitutional uh, constituency projects. They begin to arrogate to themselves some other fringe benefits. So you can see, so it's not about the constitution, it's about okay. the people. All right. Larry, let's, let's have your reaction on this. <clears throat> you see, sometimes uh, I think uh, I've said much about this particular issue of the National Assembly and all this uh, grandstanding coming from some of these uh, proponents of uh, bringing down the number of... Uh, you call it grandstanding? Uh, yes, because uh, I think they are excited fellows. You know, they, they believe they can just come up and create an impression that uh, people, because of a popular views that are being held, which as far as I'm concerned has to do with more, you know, of uh, politics. You see, when I look at the, the, when this particular idea of having 100 and something senators and uh, 300 and something... Uh, House of Reps members from the federal. I look at when we had that particular issue, we are not up to 200 million. And today, you, you, when you look at the mortality rate and so many other things that we are experiencing as a nation, you know, the, the level of development that is cutting across in the nation, the population increase and so many other things. The question you ask yourself, whether even the 400 or something, whether they are enough to represent the people they are representing. You see, that is where I have issues. I always say it, and that is where I have some certain disagreement with people. My challenge is not the National Assembly. One, you have a National Assembly with a budget of 130 billion. What is the percentage of that money to our total budget? We had a budget of how many trillion now that we are running? I don't know if you understand yes. me. I've sat down a lot of times, and I said that these people should stop distracting Nigerians. The call for the three million down of national assembly, even if, if I want to take the call coming from Russia to Korocha, this is a governor, and we saw you have a uh, happiness ministry and so many other things he's created in Imo State, where I come from, you know, and this somebody that if you look at his cabinet, you will see the bogus cabinets he ran, almost all his family has ministries, ministries created to them, and in-laws and the semi-in-laws and mini-in-laws and so many other things. So you will see the insincerity in those making the call. But the point I'm making is this. One, you look at the National Assembly, you have three senators from Imo State, a state that is not less than five million. Well, we have three from every state. You know, three from yeah, every state. Yes, it yeah. costs across. Even in states that like Lagos, Lagos yes. that you can say it's almost 20 million. Are you telling me that three senators with how many House of Rest members are enough to gather the muscle and resources to even cater for that number? So what I'm seeing here is a, a calculated attempt by those in the executive. I once ch challenged somebody, when we were talking about 25%, I said, where is the 25%? You talk about some certain things that they call, uh, what is this thing they usually do? Um, uh, uh, constituency project. And you ask, constituency project is an initiative of the reps member or the senator who manages that particular force. It's the executive. They apply that particular decision, but whether this man will come to the background and present somebody is something else. But who are the monitoring agency of government in charge of that? I was talking with somebody and I discovered when one of the senators or house member was defending this and I said that the Senate or the National Assembly in general has been used as a scapegoat by, by Nigerians, which was a creation of the political elite in the executive. They said something. He said, you are talking about a National Assembly that has almost 5,000 staffs, that has constituency that they represent and whatever they represent. But do you believe that a parastatal within the executive, a ministry has a budget of 300 billion? And people were surprised. I said, what is the impute of that particular ministry that has a budget of 300 billion, which is even three times or two times more than the budget of the National Assembly? What my challenge about the National Assembly is not that maybe whether they, 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 they are so much, is their productivity. And in what sense, if you have an executive that is focused, if you have a judiciary that is focused, if you have the masses that is focused 
of what real governance really meant. You know what we have? If we monitor those people that are supposed to do their jobs as oversight, because that is the responsibility of the National Assembly. Okay. And if you have a National Assembly that has a budget of 120 something billion, you understand me? If they are doing the late for, because within the Senate, you have subcommittees, and these subcommittees are supposed to go to their own you know, states to perform due diligence in so many of the monitoring and oversight they're supposed to do. So if you cut the number, which as far as I'm concerned, sincerely speaking, that's my personal view, it's not even enough based on the population growth we are experiencing. Yeah, but it's a good place to start from. I mean, if that can be done. No, let me tell you. Yes. If you are talking about the issue of, you know, having, uh, uh, what do you call it, the reason for the, for the trimming down of that particular something, which has to do with funds, I don't think the challenge should be with the National Assembly. The executive has enormous responsibility, even with the ministry, because they control the ministries, they control every parastatal of government. Okay, you, need to, you need to run up your thoughts now so I can take a reaction from um, Adebi. So, so yes. what I'm saying in essence is this. As far as I'm concerned, the National Assembly, if they are doing the niche for, yes. if they are doing their normal oversight, the way they're supposed to do it, they are not my issue. The formula is something that they have it's not the issue, because as far as I'm concerned, it's not even enough. Do you subscribe to that? The 469 lawmakers. Now, we have 35 states with the Federal yes. Capital Territory making 36. 469 lawmakers. Isn't that an issue as it is? I'll, I have my views, yes. and, I will, and I will share with Nigerians. Okay. My view is, as a country, as we are, in terms of resource base, we have to be nimble in governance. In, because when the cost of governance is high, then, and the... The, you see, I try to put a, uh, a correlation. When the cost of governance is high yes. and the preponderance of the people to corruption is high, when you reduce the number, you get a reducing corruption level. And the few that are going to be left there will now perform. See, I don't know why the, the issue of constituency projects should come. When you function very well, you are a representative of your people. You will ensure that they exist, because your job is to become a watchdog on behalf of Nigerians, be beyond the legislation of the laws of, of, of the land, which must have a reflection of every Nigerian in, ten, in, ten, in terms of the ethnicity uh, and the federal view. Then you must perform your function of oversight very well. And that 300 million is possibility, billion is possibility yeah. for is for the federation. It's not for selected few people. Because when we bring down the calculation per senator, per rep member, what they earn in relation to even salaries of the highest paid uh, people in, in civil service, you realize that uh, at some quarter, <clears throat> what a senator takes home in, in a year yeah. is what somebody who has worked 35 years in service cannot even take home. So that's a call to question. Yes. So that alone is, is a free up of resource to become available to all Nigerians. That's number one. Number two is, is that when you have grown a lean uh, cost of governance, it means that the people will function. The productivity you are, that you desire will come because the people will now know. Because the job is when the guy, the, when the dog that is meant to police the house okay. get too fat, eh, it will not function well. And that's what we find ourselves doing okay. now. Still, still a whole lot to put on this evening. I mean, we're really pressed for time. Now, many people even argue the fact that they shouldn't even be on permanent basis. And it brings me to the question, do you think at this point in time, the call for a unicameral legislature is, is handy at this point in time? As far as I'm concerned... Okay, that would mean against crapping out the Senate. That would be a complete obliteration of the Senate. We, we are running a democracy and uh, we borrowed it from somewhere. And uh, I feel if there are any distractions or infractions that has to do with the real meaning or positioning of that particular you know, kind of government that we are running, yes. we are creating a serious chaos, you know, even, even within the polity. I insist, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I want to correct what impression he made. I say the parastata within the, the ministry. I'm not talking about a ministry as a whole, you know, and the, the point there is that later I went and I discovered, which I wouldn't like to mention here, that particular organization that budgeted that 300 billion. So it's something that Nigerians need to know. Yes. All because we don't have 
this document that they call the budget. If we have that particular document they call the budget, if every Nigerian has that document, you would have known that my challenge here, or the challenge of Nigerians, is not about that. Because it's still in the same country here that you are hearing that the pension funds of 2.2 trillion has been given to two ministries. Even with the budget that they had, whether executed or not. So the, it's not about that. They are oh, not enough. Sorry, as as Larry, I'll, I'll need to cut you. I quickly want to read this. Um, okay. In 2018, Shou Sani stated that Nigerian senators are entitled to monthly expenses of 13.5 million naira, in addition to their monthly salaries of more than $2,000. Now, do you believe that more lawmakers and Nigerians should fight for the reduction? And then again, Okorocha argued in October 2019 that the total number of federal lawmakers should be revealed to 146, while Dino Melai stated that something similar in 2015, but as regards their salaries and allowances, unicameral legislature. Do you subscribe to that? As far as, as, uh, as, far as I'm, I, I am concerned, I, I think the, the way we have it in our constitution is okay. We should just prone down the numbers. That's my view. We should just prone down the numbers because, that's, because we, we have a document that we use, which is the Nigerian constitution. And that's democracy. Uh, and, and, that, and in that document, we said that we're going to run on democracy. And I think we should subscribe to it the way it is. I'm prone down the number because the whole aim of this whole discussion is, is, is about how we can have more resources available to Nigerians and how we can run a governance with a lean cost okay. to, uh, you know, to represent Nigeria fairly and to bring out a, a, a higher degree of productivity in terms of from the governance point of view, from the executive, the judiciary, and what have you, and for the larger populace of Nigerians to reap the dividend of democracy, whereby they have a country they can call their own. They have a country where things will function properly. They have a country where the health care will be there. The educational system that is decaying, will, will know, there will be a change in that system to a system where, whereby Nigerian universities will begin to rank among the top in the world. Okay. And what have you? Quickly, that way I need to take your reaction. Uh, to prone down the numbers or a unicameral legislature? I, I don't support, unicameral would have been better, but as okay. far as I'm concerned, the reality of Nile, I cannot suggest that. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll insist, because if you have governors or past governors in a state and their deputies that made this pension fund, that in every two years, a governor is entitled to more than one, one house in, outside the state and in the state, 700 million, 500 million across board, and it's the year, you know, the, the speakers have added themselves, and it's increasing in number. If you might use Lagos now, you know, our former governor here at Lagos State, Tunubu is enjoying it, Fashola is also enjoying it, and maybe if this guy happened to be lucky to go two terms, as, as he put it there, he will also enjoy it. And it costs across all the states. When you look at the multiplying effect, that is what increases the cost of governance. So we should, I, I want Nigerians to look at the main content of what cost of governance and what is really eating us. You have those that are responsible with the budgeting. You bring the budget to the National Assembly, you understand me, the executive loss over them creates uncertain chaos within them, either through inducement, financial inducement and so many other things, which will make them to look away with the reality of what they are meant to do. So I think what the National Assembly Should needs now yeah. is threatening, you know, Let's give them the support to strengthen them, to make them not to lose focus, but to have direct focus on real oversight as what they're supposed to be doing. Thank you very much, it's Larry Eminike, and also Raman Adibi from Ibado Plus Politics this evening. Thank Thanks for staying with us. We will take our Plus report now. When we return, I will be giving you my take. Stay with us. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Baratai, has reiterated the Nigerian Army's commitment to ensuring the welfare of troops deployed to the Northeast. General Baratai, while commissioning several projects, said personnel of the Nigerian Army will continue to perform their constitutional responsibilities. He also laid the foundation for the construction of the perimeter fence of the barracks and called on the personnel of the Army to consolidate on the gains made against Boko Haram in the last few years. My vision for the Nigerian Army places premium and of course, on the welfare of the troops and their families. Thus, the Entrepreneurship and Skill Acquisition Center is expected to develop the skills of the youths and women here in the cantonment 
in becoming self-reliant. In the same vein, the transit accommodation will assist in facilitating the general administration of the large number of personnel deployed here in the Northeast who use the Gibson Jalo cantonment as a transit point. Also, the accident and emergency world will enhance health care delivery for the soldiers and their families, as well as the locals residing around the cantonment. The people of Adama State are indeed grateful to the Nigeria Army for the efforts to combat terrorism in the Northeast. In particular, we are happy with the efforts of the troops of 23 Brigade to reciprocate your efforts. The Adama State Government is making effort to assist in renovating the command the government day secondary school and road network in Gibson Jalo Cantome. The provision of these projects no doubt will greatly enhance the welfare of our troops and their families. We are there mo therefore most grateful, sir, for your keen interest in looking into the welfare needs of the troops of three division and the Nigerian army in general. The center comprised departments for computer studies, barbing, hairdressing, handcrafts, block making, amongst several others. In the interim, the 23 Brigade Education Officer has been tasked to coordinate the activities of the center. The brigade has selected 53 students, as you can see before you, just ahead, who are mainly the women and youths from this cantonment and some from our neighboring com communities to attend the maiden courses, which are expected to commence on the 6th January next year. Here is my take. Our politics has got to go beyond the divides of ethnicity, religion, nepotism, and even the current zoning system in place. Nigeria and Nigerians are deserving of qualitative representations and leaders regardless of which geopolitical zone they are from. And this we must instill and insist in our politics. For the cost of governance, my submission is Nigeria has got to consciously adopt a bicameral national assembly. This is because of who and what we are. The diversity of Nigeria and ethnic composition of the country requires that we have a system that provides justice, equity, and fair play. It's been Plus Politics. I am Benny Ark. Thanks for watching.